All right, Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel, the elect of Yahweh Shai, and that's pursuant to uh, Matthew 24 and 30, because it's all about the elect, the elect of the nation of Israel, which in comparison to the nation is a small number. Let me say that again, the elect in comparison to the nation of Israel, which is like the sand of the sea, that's what the scriptures say, is a very small number. And a lot of Israelites don't realize that or take that seriously. You know, and this is why it is written, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. You know, a lot of Israelites don't know how serious that is to uh, be a part of the elect. As a matter of fact, there's a scripture. I can't remember it right now, but when you look up the, uh, there's a certain word in the verse, when you look up the definition, I think it's uh, firstborn. Let me see if, if that's it. Basically, it says, it says uh, the highest office possible. That's the elect. The elect is the highest office possible, period. I think it's the word firstborn. So those of us that's been called to this knowledge, this truth, and we're a part of the elect, excuse me, we're a part of the elect, we have attained the highest office possible. Now this is, this is a definition from the Blue Letter Bible. Okay? And if I can't find it, if someone is able to find it, there's got to be a brother out there who knows what I'm talking about. You can uh, put the uh, definition in the comment section. Bear with me for a minute. I don't know what the heck happened there. Firstborn. Okay, let's try this again. All right. Yeah, so... Uh, firstborn, firstborn. Okay, here we go. This might be it. This might be it. Oh, it could be first fruits. I'm going to try. If it's not firstborn. Oh, look at this. Look at this. This is uh, now the Greek word there for. Uh, let's do this right. The Greek word there for. Um, for. For. Uh, the firstborn is uh, prototokos, prototokos. Strong's G, 4416, prototokos, prototokos. Okay, prototokos, as you just heard, um, the firstborn, and the firstborn starts with Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai is... Uh, the first spirit created, period. As you see here, yeah, they have Christ, but we say Yahweh Shai. We don't believe in that Christ crap. Um, we believe in Yahweh Shai. That's his true name according to the ancient Hebrew language. Uh, the firstborn of all creation. There you go. So Yahweh Shai was the very first spirit created. That's why Yahweh Shai gets everything. Okay, now I'm going to read this passage down here. It says, uh, Who was the Son of God, and his name is Yahweh, long before those who by his agency and merits are exalted to the nature and dignity of the sons of God. That's, that's the elect. That begins with the elect. 
like case in point, 144,000. Okay, we start with the apostles, the 12 apostles. All right. The 144,000, 144, which I believe the 12 apostles are part of the 144,000, which is the government body of the nation of Israel, unless I'm wrong. And if I'm wrong, someone can correct me in the, in the comment section. But I think they're part of the body of the 144,000. Um, because when you go in the, uh, you go in the, uh, book of, uh, Revelation, where it speaks about the 144,000, I believe that's the book of Revelation, the seventh, the seventh chapter. Matter of fact, uh, let me finish, read that and uh, we'll go right to it. Who was the son of the Most High? long before those who by his agency and merits are exalted to the nature and dignity of the sons of the Heavenly Father with the added suggestion of the supreme rank. So that goes back to what? The highest office possible. The highest office possible. Uh, added suggestion of the supreme rank by which he excels these other sons. So that's what it means to be part of the elect. And in reality, you know, Great Millstone and our affiliates were the only Israelite group that, that heavily stresses upon the elect. Okay? Now let's go to Revelation 7. To help support the statement I made about the 12 being part of the 144. I mean, it makes sense to me. And I, I honestly hope I'm correct. There you go. Oh, I guess we got to start the first verse. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. And by the way, when Yahushai comes... He, where is he going to gather his elect from? The four corners of the earth. But the main part of the elect is going to be delivered right here in America. The main part of the elect, the lion's share, if you will, of the elect will be delivered right here in America. But the elect, the truth is the elect of Yahweh Shai is scattered all over the world. So, Reading on, it says, And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And that wind is talking about is the, the nuclear wind. Okay, the nuclear wind, the wind of destruction. Because the precept that goes with that is the book of Jeremiah, the 50th chapter. And by the way, that's a future prophecy in Jeremiah. That prophecy hasn't happened yet. Actually, it's the 51st chapter. The book of Jeremiah 51 and 1. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will raise up against Babylon. What is America? America is known as Babylon the Great. America is the modern day Babylon, which the word Babylon means confusion. So this Babylon is talking about here is a future prophecy. It's talking about America. America is this Babylon that it's talking about here. So this prophecy hasn't even happened yet. We're waiting for it to happen patiently. I will raise up against Babylon and against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me a destroying wind. Now, what is that destroying wind? That's the wind that's going to come from those nuclear missiles when they're exploded. You know, I always talk about the destruction Yahweh and the angels are going to bring. And that's true. But we can't forget about the other side too, the missiles. All right, which the missiles is part of the Lord's army. That's pursuant to Joel, the second chapter. The nuclear missiles are part of the Lord's army. And when they explode with all that energy, they're going to create this wind, this Russian mighty wind, a wind of fire, if you will. And you've seen the, an example of that. They dramatized it in that movie Terminator 2, you know, starring uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Linda Hamilton. Linda Hamilton played um, uh, Sarah Connor. All right? And... Um, there's a scene in the movie, for those of you who haven't seen it, I suggest that you 
see that movie if not for that poignant scene where uh, Linda Hamilton, Linda Hamilton, who plays Sarah Connor, she's uh, you know she has this dream which actually is a nightmare, and she's uh, you know at this park, and she's watching herself and these children play, and uh, all of a sudden there's this bright flash, which is, which represents the missiles exploding. They had detonated a nuclear bomb, and then you see this bright flash and then all of a sudden you see this uh, wall of fire uh, com uh, combined with this mighty wind, this rushing mighty wind and it engulfs everything in its path including uh, including uh, the woman who played Sarah Connor you know uh, in the movie and the children that was with her on the park you know, or, I'm sorry, in the park, and uh, she's rattling the fence. She's trying to, she's trying to wake them up to what's coming. Okay, it's a very poignant scene. All right, and they got that straight out of the scriptures, straight out the Bible. Okay, so this is what this is talking about here, Jeremiah 51 and 1. Thus saith the Lord: Behold, I will raise up against Babylon. And against them, that, and against them that dwell in the midst of them, that rise up against me, a destroying wind. And I give you an example from that movie Terminator Two. And I will send unto Babylon fanners that shall fan her, and shall empty her land. For in the day of trouble they shall be against her round about. And we, what's an example of those fanners? Well, when you have a little fire, if you keep fanning it, it turns into a big fire. The oxygen gives it, gives it, gives the fire life. So, the fanners would be like all the turmoil that America is going through right now, especially with uh, the Ukraine and Russia. That's about to turn into a, 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 a big conflict between um, between uh, America and Russia. And then you 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 got that female basketball player Brittany Griner, I think it, her name is. Uh, there's there's some conflict there too, you know. She's being held in a Russian prison. I believe she got the sentence a sentence of nine years. So that that's a little conflict, you know. America's a little sore about that, you know. They have the, the fact that they have a so-called American in prison over there in Russia, and America and Russia don't have the greatest uh, relations, you know. Uh, Putin and his and his uh, general General Armageddon which his real name is Sergei Sorovkin, I think his name is, uh, pretty much in their minds is to, you know, to uh, build back Mother Russia, imper imperialist Russia, okay? And there's a scripture in the book of Ezekiel where it speaks about how an evil thought, matter of fact, let me see if I can find it. Let's go to that real quick will enter into the mind of these so-called Russians because the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through his son, Yahweh Shai, have already put it in the minds of these Russians to eventually mix it with America, shoot missiles, and not just America, Israel as well. Because Israel, Israel, the tiny state of Israel is a welfare state of America. Okay? Uh, Ezekiel. So these are all the things we're looking forward to see. In the time in the time that we're living in, uh, Ezekiel thirty-eight and eleven, I think it is. Yep, this is it. I'll start at the tenth verse. Ezekiel thirty-eight and ten. Thus saith the Lord God, which his name is Yahweh. It shall also come to pass that at the same time shall things come into thy mind, and that's talking about the mind of Gog, which Gog represents Russia today. Gog and Magog. Because when you go to uh, begin at the first verse, and the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog. So that's Russia today. And uh, we've done tons of videos on this. Okay? Even, you, even your, uh, your uh, dime store scholar knows that Gog and Magog represents Russia today. Okay? 
the chief prince of Misha and Tubal and prophesy against him. So the Lord is going to use Russia to eventually destroy America. And this is what this is what this goes into right here. The prophecy right here. Ezekiel 38 and 10. Thus saith the Lord God, it shall also come to pass that at that time shall things come into thy mind and thou shalt think an evil thought. So these are the heads of Russia, beginning with Putin and his cabinet. And we believe Putin is going to be the guy. Unless the Holy Spirit say different, Putin got to be that guy, man. Because Putin is a, that's a warrior president or prime minister or whatever title they use over there in Russia. That guy is a straight up warrior, okay? He's into the uh, martial arts and all of that. Unlike Joe Biden. <laughs> All right, he's a warrior president. And his general, come on, his general, that guy looks like a bloodthirsty, a bloodthirsty uh, individual, okay? Anyway, reading on, it says, And thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. What, what is that talking about? America. America is this land of unwalled villages. All right, the states are not... Bounded by walls. Now, back in the past, when you have, when when you had a city, the city was bounded by walls. Like case in point, you had the city of Jericho. All right, that's right. The phone had to chime on that one. You had the city of Jericho, and uh, Jericho was bounded by walls. Okay, another case in point is uh, uh, the city of Jerusalem. Okay. And then you had, you had the walls around the city, and then you had the gates. And usually at the gates, you had the leaders of the city sat at the gates, the gates of the city. Okay. So, fast forward to today, you have the you have America, and you have these different states, and there's no walls around those states. So, that's your example of the land of unwalled villages. That's America. So. Remember, Gog and Magog represents Russia, so they're going to have this evil thought, right? And thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. I will go to them that are at rest. Again, that's America. America's, America's, uh, this is playground. This is fun land. America's fun land. That's what America is. If you ever watch Pinocchio, all right, the, uh, the ancient, Pinocchio movie, the Disney one, made way back in the, uh, what was it, the 30s, All right? There was a place that Pinocchio went to called Funland. And when you watch the cartoon, it, it, Funland reminds you of America, okay? So, and thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. I will go to them that are at rest that dwell safely, all of them dwelling with, without walls and having neither bars nor gates. Like I said, uh, you know, back in the past, you had the city of Jericho, city of Jerusalem. Our cities had walls around them. Then you had the gates, and at the gates sat the leaders of the city. Okay, if you had business in the city, you'd have to go to the leaders of the city first and state your business, and then you were let in, you know. So you don't have that in America. You have the different states. There's no boundaries. All you have is a sign saying if you, like case in point, I live over here in Connecticut right now. And uh, if I go to New York, I'll see a sign saying, welcome to New York. That's about it. There's no boundary. There's no uh, gates. Okay. So this is definitely the land of unwalled villages. That's the point. So Russia is going to think an evil thought. The leaders of Russia, Gog and Magog, they're going to think this evil thought, and they're going to they're going to seek to invade America, okay? <laughs> and why are they going to do that? Let's read on. To take a spoil and to take a prey and to turn thine hand upon the desolate ones that are now inhabited. Uh, I'm sorry, upon the desolate places that are now inhabited, and upon the people that are gathered out of the nations. Yeah. America is, is also known as what? The melting pot. Okay? Because you got all the different nations here. The different nations of people here. All right? That are gathered out of the nations 
which have gotten cattle and goods that dwell in the midst of the land. Yeah, that's America. So the day is coming when Putin will decide, and Putin got to be that guy, man. But he's going to decide, you know what? I've had enough of America's bullshit, and let's just invade America. And he's going to have allies with him. It tells you that in Ezekiel 38. He's going to have, as a matter of fact, uh, let me go to the verse. There you go, the fifth verse. And, and it's the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, that's going to put that thought into the mind of the, of the Russian leaders. All right? Uh, because remember, Putin is trying to bring back imperialist, imperialist Russia, Mother Russia. That's, that's, that's the campaign that he's on. Okay? Ezekiel 38 and 4. And I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws. And I will bring thee forth, that's Russia, and all thine army, horses and horsemen, their military, all of them clothed with armor, or with all sorts of armor, even the great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. That's the military hardware. Now, like I said, Russia is going to have company with them. It ain't just going to be Russia invading America. Uh, Persia, which is Iran today. And you know the Iranians, you know they hate America with a passion. Ethiopia, the same thing with them. They don't like this place. And Libya, come on. <laughs> so Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them. All of them with shield and helmet. So it's about to pop off, man. Okay? It's about to pop off. World War Three. we're very close to it. Very close to it. And you're going to have two stars in World War Three. You're going to have Russia and America. The eagle or the bear and the eagle. The bear and the eagle. The bear being Russia. The eagle being America. America, the symbol of America is the eagle, the bald eagle. So going back to um, going back to Revelation seven. So now you know what it means. Holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth. So, even as I speak right now, the angels are holding back the destruction. Okay, and they're doing that until the elect is sealed. Because as we read, it says, uh, and I, "Well, let me read it again." And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth. And we know what wind that's talking about. The nuclear wind, the, destruct, the, the wind of destruction. And the precept for that is Jeremiah, the 51st chapter. Nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And, and, uh, and people as well. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living power. What is that? That's the, this knowledge, this truth. There's a scripture where it speaks about we were sealed with the Holy Ghost of promise. That's this knowledge. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. Right. These angels are holding back the destruction. That's why we haven't seen nuclear warfare yet. But it's coming. Okay, the, the angels are holding it back as, as commanded by the Father. Saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our power in their foreheads. See? And who is that? That's the elect. The elect of the nation of Israel sealed with what? Sealed with this knowledge, this truth. Okay? And the phone had to chime on that one. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. There you go. So twelve thousand out of each tribe. So clearly you can see it's all about the elect. And then it speaks about the <clears throat> speaks about the um the uh Right here, uh, Revelation 7, 13. One of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? <clears throat> the white robes represents this knowledge. And I said unto him, Sir, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes. Meaning they, they've learned this knowledge, this truth. 
and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. So now they're pure. Okay, so that's the, that, that's the multitude that the Apostle John saw. Those are, uh, out, those are outside of the 144,000, and they're part of the elect. Actually, the number is the one-third. And, and the 12 apostles are included in the one-third. Where do we get this one-third number from? We go to the book of Zechariah 13 and 8. Zechariah 13 and 8. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, the land is talking, really talking about America, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. That's two-thirds of these Israelites out here. That's why we have something called the two-thirds club. So any guy who can't get this knowledge, this truth, he won't repent. Because for you, for you to repent, you have to get this knowledge and this truth to repent correctly. And that's what it's all about, man. That one video I was watching, matter of fact, I think it focusing on that video right now. This video here. Chapter 30. This is uh, the brother from uh, Des Moines. If you should see this video, he can put his name in the comment section. He did this video entitled, You Gonna Die a Nigger Too. <laughs> and he's, he's talking about that crackpot, Charleston White. Um, yeah, so they're part of the two-thirds club. Okay? They're part of the, the two-thirds club, like it says here. Zechariah 13 and 8. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, save the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. But the third shall be left in. So the apostles are part of the third part. The 144,000, the government members, are part of the third part. And the rest of the Israelites that are slated to be saved. The men, the women, and the children. Because you're going to have women that, that are going to be delivered too. Okay? Uh, let me show you that. Yeah, you're going to have some of you sisters going to be delivered. You know, we get down hot and heavy on the sisters, but the truth is you have women out there that actually do believe in this knowledge and this truth. Blue Letter Bible lately been tripping, man. You got to do think, things twice to get what you want. There we go. <laughs> it is what it is. Luke 17 and... Uh, Luke 17 and 35, these are the words of Yahweh Shah. He said, two women shall be grinding together. What does that mean? Uh, does that mean they're lesbians? You know, they're, 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 having, they're having carnal knowledge of each other? No. It means they're going to be working. Grinding together means they're going to be working. You're going to have one woman on a job, uh, another woman on a job, right? Like it says here, two women shall be grinding together. The one shall be taken and the other left. So when Yahushua comes with those chariots and we're, we're taken up into those so-called UFOs, the chariots of the Lord, you're going to have two women, one going to be left, one going to be taken. The one that's left, that means she's part of the two-thirds. All right, She's not on the list to be delivered. But the one that's taken is part of the one-third. Because when you go back to um, Zechariah, speaks about how the Lord said he's going to bring the, the third part through the fire. Because when Yahweh comes with those so-called UFOs, the chariots, he's going to bring fire. All right? He's going to bring fire. Those chariots are going to bring fire right along with the missiles. Remember that destroying wind, the wall of fire? Remember that? Matter of fact, um, wow. Um, First Thessalonians. <clears throat> Here we go. First Thessalonians, the, the fourth chapter, the 17th verse. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. That's, those are the so-called UFOs. That's the instrument of our salvation, Ron Dalton. Okay, because he, he in his video, he scoffed at the concept of the, the so-called UFOs being the chariots of the Lord. Okay. Anyway, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, that's the so-called UFOs and chariots of the Lord, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. That's why it says over here, uh, Luke 17 and 35, two women 
shall be grinded together, the one shall be taken and the other left. So again, when the Lord comes with those so-called UFOs, the chariots of the Lord, and they're going to be taking up the elect, abducting them, if you will, so that they can escape the destruction, you're going to have two women, one's gonna, one is going to be left, the other woman is going to be taken. So how powerful is that, man? Matter of fact, a scripture that comes to mind is Isaiah 26 and 20. Let's read that. That's, a, that's also a future prophecy. You got these people knocking the Old Testament. You don't know the Bible, man. And the reason why you don't know the Bible is because the Holy Spirit's not working with you. There's prophecies in the Old Testament that haven't been fulfilled yet, man. And here's one of them, Isaiah 26 and 20. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers. That's talking about, again, that's talking about the so-called UFOs, the chariots of the Lord, which are instrument of salvation, along with Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai himself is coming with those so-called UFOs, the chariots of the Lord. Tells you that in Matthew 24 and 30. Also, Revelation 1 and 7, Behold, he cometh with clouds. I mean, we're going to need a, a superior vehicle to escape the coming destruction, man. The wall of fire that's going to sweep across the land. You can't, you can't escape in no ordinary vehicle. You need a superior vehicle. <laughs> And that's the so-called UFOs. That's the chariots of the Lord. They are superior vehicles. Okay, so Isaiah 26 and 20. Come my people, enter thou into thy chambers. So that's a, a dark saying for the so-called UFOs, the chariots of the Lord. This is when, uh, Lord willing, we get abducted, taken right into those chariots. It, again, it speaks about it in the uh, the Apocrypha. Wisdom of Solomon, I believe it is, the, the 15th chapter. Wisdom of Solomon, the 15th chapter, if I'm not mistaken. The strangeness of his salvation. Let me see if I'm correct on that. Uh, bear with me for a minute. Okay. Okay, see, that's why I went to check. It's not wisdom and song. What is it? Um, uh, let me see, let me see. Um, is it the fifth chapter? Wisdom of Solomon. The fifth chapter, let's try that. I think it's wisdom of Solomon, the fifth chapter. Let's try that. Yep, this is it. Where it speaks about the strangeness of their salvation. And that's why Ron, Ron, Ron Dalton, that's why Ron Dalton makes fun of the concept of the so-called UFOs, the chariots of the Lord, because that's a strange thing to him. Now, in, in the book of, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, For the heathen is dismayed at them. That's written, the book of... Um, Jeremiah, the 10th chapter. His scripture says, Be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. One of the signs of heaven is so-called UFOs, the chariots of the Lord. You even had the slave Wallace Willis who sang the song, Swing Low, Sweet Chariot, coming for the carry me home. He made that song after sighting the so-called UFO while he was in the cotton fields working his ass off. You know, he was catching so much hell you know, so much affliction from being in those cotton fields that he saw the so-called UFOs and he, he just wanted them to take him home, take him back to the land of Israel. So that was a spiritual song. That's what they call one of those Negro spirituals, okay? And that shows you right there, we've all, always been close to the Bible. Indeed, we are the people of the Bible. And them Negro spirituals didn't, didn't come out of Esau. No, it came out of our people, man. So Esau, he's being exposed on every, every freaking level. Okay, he's an ungodly man. He's an ungodly man, Esau, Edom, beginning with the small hats. Anyway, Wisdom of Solomon, the fifth chapter, first verse, Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him. And who's that talking about? Us Israelites. We're standing in great boldness before Esau and the other nations, but mainly Esau. They have afflicted us through something called slavery. 
Okay, the Heavenly Father ain't forgotten about that that slave that slave trade, man. The Heavenly Father has not forgotten about the slavery of His people, by the nation of Edom. Okay, and they're gonna have to pay. All right. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as as have afflicted him, and made no account of his labors. <laughs> Does that sound familiar? You can never please this devil. He doesn't care about your labor. He looks at you as a, as a as a bug. You're beneath him, you know? And he's supposed to. He's in his kingdom. So I can't fault Esau for that. He's in his kingdom. Now, the only thing I know is when we're in our kingdom, we're going to look at him worse. So how about that? As the, as the old saying goes, turn about is fair play. Okay? When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear <laughs> and shall be amazed. Here's the point and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation. What does that mean? That's those so-called UFOs, man, the chariots of the Lord taking up the elect. Like we read about that, those two women, one shall be left, one shall be taken. There you go. The strangeness of his salvation. See, that's why I had to bring that scripture out. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation. So far beyond all that they look for. And that, again, that's why Ron, Ron Dalton scoffs at the idea of the chariots of the Lord being the so-called UFOs and that they're going to deliver us. He scoffs at that idea because to him it's strange. And even though he's an Israelite, to him it's strange. So how much more the other nations, including Esau, eat him? I mean, when it happens, when they start seeing these so-called UFOs, the chariots of the Lord... They're going to think, the people of the world, they're going to think that they're being invaded by little green men from Mars. They have no idea that inside of those so-called UFOs, the chariots of the Lord, are angels. The angels of the Lord. And the angels of the Lord, they look like so-called black men. They got big woolly afros and big beards. Okay, that's what they look like. Okay? So we're getting ready to see a lot of strange and wonderful things, man. But... We'll, we'll understand because we have this knowledge, we have this truth. That's why it is written, uh, uh, wisdom and knowledge, Isaiah 33 and 6, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our times. This is what keeps your mind stable because you know the deal, you know the script. It's like you're in this movie and you've been handed the script. You know the movie. Unlike somebody watching the movie, they don't know what's, what is, what's about to happen. But you're an actor in the movie, you have the script. You know exactly what's going to happen. Well, guess what? Well, what's the script? This knowledge, this truth. That's why it's called scriptures. Check it out. Scriptures. So we know the script, man. So we know what's going to happen. Again, Isaiah 26 and 20. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself as it were for a little moment. Kind of reminds you of Noah. You know, Noah was told to build this ark, which spiritually we're building the ark right now by teaching this knowledge. Right? And then there came a day when Noah was commanded after he gathered the animals. And by the way, uh, 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 what's his name? I was watching him earlier today. Uh, Saul Netta, call him Saul Nigger. <laughs> he's in the hospital. Well, he's still talking shit. You know, the God of the Hebrews put me in this hospital because I don't believe in none of that shit. But wait a minute. it show you that Saul, Saul Netta, all right, Saul Netta is a double-minded man because uh, what, a couple of years ago, he was talking about he's an Israelite. He went to the Passover, you know. <laughs> and then the last video I saw, I think it was a short, he was in the, he was in the hospital, man. He, he wasn't looking too good, but he said he's all right, you know. Then he, then, uh, he apologized to, uh, to Zariac, Captain to Zariac. And he's talking about he don't believe in none of that stuff. Then he was scoffing Captain Tazariak for believing in the flood and all of that. Well, yeah, the, the flood actually did happen. Okay, Noah was told to build that boat, and they—I don't know—I guess Sarnetta don't know that they use uh, surface radar. That uh, Esau found where the ark uh, was located using surface radar. All right, the ark was very real. But anyway, the point is. The elect of Noah's day was, was Noah, his wife, his, his three sons and their wives. A total of eight people, okay, survived in the ark. 
And even when you go into so-called Chinese callig calligraphy, calligraphy, I believe it's, it's called, the symbol for the number eight is a little boat. Make that make sense, <laughs> which it does make sense. <laughs> the symbol for eight is a little boat in Chinese uh, calligraphy, all right? Eight people survived the flood. Noah, right? His wife, his three sons, and their wives. All right? So, uh, like the scripture says, we're in, we're in the time, uh, the, the coming of our Lord shall be uh, what? As, as in the days of Noah, Noe. That is written, right? Come, my people, enter down to thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee, hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment, until the indignation be overpassed. What is that? That's Yahweh Shai jacking this place up, man, especially America. And it's only going to take the Lord one hour to destroy this place. That's in the book of Revelation. For in one hour so great riches has come to naught. Talking about America. America is one of the most richest countries on the planet Earth with all that commerce. But when the Lord... And the angels get through with this place. This place is going to be a lake of fire. Everything is going to be destroyed. And the only people making it out of here is the elect of the nation of Israel, period. Everybody else is going to die. And that day is coming. That day is fast approaching, man. You better believe it. So again, come my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself as it were for a little moment. Yeah, because it's only going to take the Lord one hour to destroy this place until the indignation be overpassed. Now, meanwhile, the, the elect is going to be where? They're going to be inside those chariots, looking down at the destruction of this place. Because when you go in the book of, uh, what is that, Psalm 91? Only with thine eyes shall thou see the reward of the wicked. So the elect is going to be able to see the destruction happening from the chariots. Okay? It is right here. Uh, Psalm 91 and 6 nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. And what is that talking about? Noonday is a metaphor, a dark saying for the highest point of Esau's kingdom. Noonday would be when Esau is about to make this, this uh, RFID chip mandatory, where he's on this crazy campaign to, to electronically tag everyone at, at, the, at the penalty of death. That's what those concentration camps and detention centers are set up for, to mass chip people. So the ones that refuse, they could instantly put to, be put to death by these guillotines and the different torture instruments that they have in the in the uh, in these detention centers and concentration camps. Okay, because that's the major plan of the of the uh, top wicked elite. They want everyone C H I P P E D. Okay, so. That would be noonday for these devils, the highest point of their kingdom, just like noonday is the highest point of the sun, and from there the sun starts going down. Anyway, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday, and that's the nuclear missiles, the nuclear destruction that the Lord is going to bring, a thousand shall fall at thy side. What does it say in Isaiah 66, 15? Behold, the, Lord, uh, the, the slain of the Lord shall be many. Behold, the Lord cometh with fire, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. Roughly paraphrasing that scripture. So it says, A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. So that's a lot of death. But it shall not come nigh thee. Right, because the Lord's going to have a force field, for lack of a better term, around his elect as they're going up into the chariots. In other words, as they're going up into the so-called UFOs, the chariots of the Lord, the same time missiles are going to be sh shooting down upon the earth. So how powerful is that, man? <laughs> That's going to be a hell of a deliverance. Again, a thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. So the elect are going to be in, uh, in those chariots because the chariots have windows and they're going to look out the windows and they're going to see uh, the destruction of this place, particularly America. They're going to see it on fire. As a matter of fact, a brother had a vision. One of the chariots had a glass bottom. Check that out. A glass bottom. And you were, you were able to look down and see out of, out of the glass bottom. It was like looking at it uh, through a window. 
one of the brothers had that 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 vision. So, yeah, gonna be something, man. But anyway, Isaiah twenty six and twenty: Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers, and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment, until the indignation be overpassed. Now you know what that means. That's the nuclear destruction. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. And it ain't just the missiles destroying America, man. There's certain parts of the world the missiles are going to destroy. And if the missiles don't get you, the chariots will. As the chariots fly across the land, fly across the earth, you have certain chariots will have laser beams in them. And the laser beam is going to be shooting out, destroying the infrastructure, destroying the automobiles, destroying these the Esau's weapons, destroying the people, hell. Okay? So it's going to be a day of great death. Hey, Zephaniah, the first chapter, the 18th verse. Uh, well, starting at the 15th verse. A day of desolation, a day of gloominess, a day of darkness. You know, all the major and minor prophets spoke about the great day of the Lord, man. It's going to be a terrible day, man. <laughs> and, man, we are so happy that's going to happen because on the flip side of that, that's when righteousness is going to be on the planet Earth and the earth is going to be turned back to the Garden of Eden. The earth is going to be beautified once again. And Jerusalem is going to be like, like a super paradise, Jerusalem, our holy city, you know. All right, so I'm going to leave it there. Hopefully you were edified by this video. On to the next one.